Jeets out. Bitcoin back up as Bitcoin heads back above 70,000 bucks. And I need to know, I absolutely need to know on this morning, what the fuck is a Jeet? Sounds pretty racist to me, actually, but I'm curious if you could educate me or enlighten me in the comment section below because uh, I keep on seeing this terminology thrown around on crypto Twitter, which is <laughs> admittedly not the best place to be on, but it is highly entertaining. Anyways, um, today I do want to follow up on yesterday's short-term time frame analysis. We were looking for continuation um, to the upside for Bitcoin to the short-term time frame range highs. Now that Bitcoin is back above 70,000 bucks, the question is, does this spill on over into the higher-term time frames as Bitcoin does get into or not into, but very, very close to April, which April, as we went over yesterday, is, uh, you know, typically a good month. Anyways, um, first things first, let's jump into the chart view right in over here. I do want to bring back up this particular setup on the daily time frame. We saw it fire off on Tuesday, Tuesday's low of last week, actually, where Bitcoin was trading at uh, 61,900 is where that one did fire off. This is a very simple setup, by the way. It is just a trend plus volatility setup. Whenever we see extreme lows on volatility plus daily trend to the upside and three day trend to the upside, it has led to some pretty interesting statistics over the full history of Bitcoin with a just over 51% strike rate. So a really good example of, an, uh, you know, of a strategy that basically is as good as a coin toss, but because it has good risk management, well, the results over time are up and to the right, which is what we want as far as strategies do go, um, with almost a three profit factor, which is pretty fucking crazy. Anyways, um, this particular setup is very interesting to me because the performance summary right in over here does suggest that on average, we would expect a winning trades to return about 22.5%, a little bit over 22.5%, whereas the average losing trade loses a little, bit, little over 8% um, uh, right there. So... Going back into the actual data, um, we can see that from that particular entry, which fired off again, just below 62,000 bucks, where would that put Bitcoin if we were to add on the average to that? That would put Bitcoin at around 75,600 or so. So that would suggest continuation overall, but back into the setup right over here, if I remove my face for just a moment, so apologies for that, but uh, we can see that the average amount of time in the winning trades, as far as like literal days traded, uh, is four, wait, what the, what the fuck are you doing there? Um, is 14. So 14 days on average is what we would expect on the winning side. On the losing side, five days. It is certainly now more than five days. So as we said last week, the time for short-term down, uh, the time for a potential short-term um, downside was, you know, coming into the end of last week. Now that Bitcoin has kind of survived that period, the probability is going to really shift in favor of upside continuation here, kind of obviously, um, as this one, uh, again, fired off last Tuesday. So we are about a week away from that. And if we were to go all the way up to the average amount of days, which doesn't need to be exactly that, but, you know, that is typically a good guide. Um, that would be sometime around uh, Tuesday of next week. So one more week from today, actually, on the 2nd of April. Again, these are averages. There's going to be some variance in there, but it gives us kind of like a, a bit of a bit of a roadmap overall as kind of what to expect. Now, I would also say that because this setup is not just using volatility to enter, but it's also using volatility to exit, um, uh, you know, this particular setup needs to see uh, the Crown VMP volatility portion um, back above 95 percentile, which is all the way up here. And you can see right now for today's current rate, it's literally at, you know, 25 percentile. Um, and realistically, when we do see it get quite low, it usually takes uh, upon expansion at least, a, you know, at least like a week before it can really actually hit even those uh, those 95 percentile levels. So you can see from this low level right here, this low level right here, this low level right here, again, right there and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Um, so. Uh, so, I, you know, I suppose it won't be super relevant for right now, but again, gives us an overall guide, um, perhaps into the next week of price action. Now, I have said for for March, probably going to be mostly a rangy month from here on out. Um, you know, do I still hold with that? I guess so. I mean, coming into next week, that's still, you know, another week and basically the, the real trading month kind of ends on Friday anyways. But yeah, um, you know, this setup... Uh, Again, kind of playing hand with hand, hand in hand with what we've seen, but I do want to now kind of zero in on the lower term timeframes to get an idea of what this is going to look like in the more you know short term. But before we do that, I should let you know that this particular tool, which does allow for automated back testing and also automated trade trade execution, meaning that you can have your own little bot slave. You can be a fucking slave owner, which is awful. It's really really terrible, but I love doing it. Um, and, <laughs> and that service is on sale right now um, until the end of this month, which you got another I don't know four or five 
45 days left with the code happy six year. This is going to be the biggest discount that we ever have ever on this service as it is kind of like the new opening, I suppose, which you can find a link to in the description below. All right, enough of that shilling action. Let's go into the next chart right in over here. Not only did Bitcoin uh, have a nice move back up above 70,000 bucks, but we do see that the daily is printing and confirming hidden bullish evidence. Again, last week we were saying, hey, you know, at some point, this is going to be not just a potential, but a reality. It is now a reality as we do see a bounce off of the neutral zone for the daily RSI, which is what you typically do see. So, um, you know, again, from here, there's going to be some ebbs and flows, maybe some like that. But I would be looking for another move, at least to test the edge of the bullish control zone, which, again, would kind of um, imply some upwards uh, price alongside even the daily um our daily VMP momentum portion also getting a positive signature right here and maybe even getting um, uh, positive momentum, like actually twisting in that direction as well. So in this case, yeah, I'd start to look at this as um, becoming more and more interesting. But at the end of the day, the most important thing, of course, is the ranges, which we'll get into in a second. But before we get into the ranges, also yesterday we did go over the daily stochastic momentum. It did indeed cross uh, uh, cross the upside as Bitcoin closed well above sixty five thousand bucks. Now the current pivot is sixty six thousand three hundred. So that that is to say that if Bitcoin were to close below sixty six three today, like let's say it comes down, you know, four thousand bucks, definitely possible. Although it is, I mean. I mean, that's still kind of like a big move for Bitcoin. Um, you know, that'd be a very obvious rejection signal and trap signal and very likely uh, be getting another move at least down to $60,000 even. But ultimately, as long as Bitcoin's above this pivot, upside remains the more likely thing to be happening. And of course, we can now go into our ranges over here um, uh, done by the HPDR bands. And today, um, I would even say that, look, as long as Bitcoin's above 68500 it can be looked at as a potential breakout here. We have not seen yet a closure above the 60, uh, the 618 level, which is typically what I look for now as breakouts from the HPDR bands uh, on the daily or really any time frame for that matter. Um, but it is it is going to have a chance to do it today as it is opening well above that number. Um, and, that it, and that number again is 68,500. So as long as Bitcoin's closing daily is above that region, Upside is the name of the game, and the next range high at the 78.6 level is 72,200, which is actually very, very important because, as we have been saying over the past week, as long as Bitcoin's below 72,000-ish, 72, 72, um, give or take, you know, depending upon your time frame, um, you know, it is still more or less a range-bound market on the higher-term time frames. Uh, that also is to say that if Bitcoin closes above there, okay, continuation. I guess before the end of the month, um, it does seem a little bit, you know, abrupt to me. But at the end of the day, my opinion's unnecessary on that. It's, it does, doesn't mean shit. Um, I should be going off of probability statistics, and that's exactly what this is right here. And of course, if Bitcoin were to close above 72,240 or so, um, I would be looking, I suppose, for that move based off of this setup over here to play out closer to 75 or 76,000 bucks. Um, price per Bitcoins, price per highly inflated dollars of Bitcoins, I guess. Um, so fair enough. Now, at, on the other side, on the other side, if Bitcoin were to close below, below the 618 level, uh, again, 68,500 on a daily time frame, um, I would be looking for Bitcoin to, you know, at least have a quick move, test down to that 665 region. Um, at that point, this is going to start to look a lot more like a complex, um, uh, what's it called, uh, correction. So, you know, may, maybe something like that if that were to happen. And then based off here yet again, I do, however, as we went over in yesterday's video, and I do, however, I'm really starting to look at this $60,000 region as a base for price. Again, that is based off of the Bitcoin production um, cost fundamentals that we went over in many videos. Um, I'm not going to go over on this one as well, but that, you know, I'm not saying that Bitcoin's going to come down there. I'm just saying that, hey, if Bitcoin did come down there, that to me would likely be an opportunity. And perhaps it does get, you know, another shot somewhere around there after the halving, as we typically do see something like that. But um, again, that, that's, that's more of like a, if that happens statement, then I'd be looking to do that rather than I'm looking for that to happen because right now ball is in the bull is in the bull's court yet again. Um, the real question is for higher term time from continuation, does Bitcoin reclaim 72 two or not? Um, I do suspect that we will see a test there, uh, somewhere in the next like day or two, uh, probably before the end of this week. And then if Bitcoin starts to close above, okay, fair enough. More upside, more green dildos. Throw those green dildos in my face, I guess. Jeet them in, or does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> Jeet them. <'em. laughs> I'm just making shit up at this point. Jeet them. Jeet them. Jeet? What the fuck is a jeet? What is a jeet? Elsa, what's a jeet? Your bunghole. My bunghole, okay. 
my bunghole jeets. Um, my bunghole eats, actually. Anyways, daily over here, statistics. We haven't looked at this. <laughs> Not appropriate for YouTube. For fuck's sake. Wow. Holy shit. Uh, ban her, not me. If the YouTube if the YouTube gods are listening, it's her, not me. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so we're looking at the, the statistics by day here only from the time starting from 2023 because that's, at least in my opinion, where this bull market really did start. January of 2023 um, is when Bitcoin, you know, started to put in macro lows and began its slow up upwards trudge, I suppose. Um, Tuesday is an interesting day. Not as much anymore, to be honest, but um, but but it, it, it is kind of an interesting day in the sense that um, if we were to look at all Tuesdays from that time till now, 50, 56 and a quarter percent of those have closed positively with an average return of 2%. On the times that it has lost, it has had actually a rather, I would say, minimal loss. Um, in fact, one of the lowest negative return days for this tested period besides a weekend at one spot two one. So from there, we can kind of get a bit of a daily range here. And let's see what that would look like. 2% to the upside would put Bitcoin 71,500, let's say. 1.5% to the downside puts Bitcoin uh, just below 69,000 bucks. Great number. Um, so fair enough. Uh, you know, as always, I, you know, I do like going over these and I do find them actually highly accurate as well. Anyways, uh, that's probably a good place for me to be ending off on this video. Again, in the more near term, I probably would be looking for Bitcoin to test, you know, a little bit more to the upside. The question is, what does Bitcoin close above or not? Um, and even to the downside, like, you know, coming back down to 68.5 or 68.6, completely fine. Just don't want to see any closures below there. Um, if the bull laws are going to be taking, you know, the reins of this market right here, that's kind of the, the implications of these areas with a slight probabilistic favor in the upside based off of this setup right here. I should also, I should, I should also let you know that I can't speak, um, but all, not only can I not speak, uh, yesterday night I did release a video announcing that a new program, what's up AC130, welcome sir. Now get the fuck off my screen, um, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> With full respect, uh, yesterday night I did release, uh, I did announce the new program um, that I've been, uh, you know, making in the background for the past year or so now. It's called the Systematic Trading and and Quantitative Analysis Program. Sorry, I just lost my uh, my, tr my my fucking tongue there. Um, but uh, but basically, it is a hyper streamlined version of the technical analysis program um, for a much lower price point and is really geared towards those looking to I don't know trade systems like this. Um, and learn a little bit of quantitative analysis as well. Um, so it's, it's really intended to be more digestible than the, than the TA program, which preceded it. Um, and so, yeah. Um, anyways, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off. As always, I want to wish you the best of the best. Take care. What? Well, okay, say it. All right. Fuck you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Fuck you, and I'll see you tomorrow. And I just realized my face is off. All right. See you tomorrow.